get the guys with one back.
whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the past of Easter, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marked were his look beyond human semblance, in his appearance beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, Kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have learned? Who would believe that we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him no esteem. Yet it was our infirmity that he bore, our suffering that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away and who would have thought any more of his destiny when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people. A grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life. And the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servants shall justify many and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got out, got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with a lantern torches and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus, He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what had been said. I have not lost any of those gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into this cover. Shall I not bring the cup that the Father gave me? 
So the band of soldiers, the tribune and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had consoled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gates outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was a gatekeeper said to Peter, He said, Now the slaves and the guards were standing around the charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temporary where all Jews gather and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this any way to answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him abound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm, and they said to him, He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order to be defiled so they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charges have you brought against this man? They answered and said to him, At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your laws. The Jews answered him, in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the king, the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, on your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You said, I am a king. For this I was born. And for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my truth. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, And they struck him repeatedly 
Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and Pilate said to him, Behold, your man, the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Fit him yourself and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the Praetorium and said to them, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him, so Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You will have no power over me if it has not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greatest sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out. If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king of the world is When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in a place called the Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was a preparation day for the Passover, and it was about noon, and he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then, then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in, who, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read the inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless woven in one piece from the top to down. So they said to one another, In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This was about the soldiers did, standing by the cross of Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple that he, he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a spring hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit.
Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other, one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they come to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe, for this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing the mixture of mirth and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bowed it with a burial cloth along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. This evening's liturgy is different from any other liturgy on any other day of the entire year. The church even looks different than it does on any other day, stark and bare, with a more quiet, solemn, serious atmosphere. Things are different today because something very important, something very significant is being celebrated on this day in this special liturgy. Today, Good Friday all over the world, Christians will be celebrating the great mystery of Christ's love for us. Greater love no one has than he who lays down his life for his friends, John said in his gospel. Well, this is the day Jesus lived those words. In the Passion we just read together, we heard the story of our redemption. Now, this is not a historical event that happened 2,000 years ago, which has no collection with you and me. Jesus suffered and died on the cross for each one of us here now and for all humanity. The second part of this Good Friday service is the veneration of the cross, a time for us to reflect in a special way on the events of Good Friday as we honor the symbol of Jesus' triumph over sin and death. You know, most of the time the cross or the crucifix is just a fixture hanging on a wall in a room in our house, and we tend to take it for granted. But that cross on our bedroom wall is the symbol and the reminder of our salvation. Good Friday is the day we gather together around the cross. Symbolically, everything else has been removed from the sanctuary, as you can see. There are times in the life of every one of us when it seems like there is only the cross and nothing else. That was the experience of Jesus in his passion on that first Good Friday. Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead to open for us the gates of heaven and eternal life. But before he did that, for three years, Jesus went from village to village, doing good, teaching, and healing. Everywhere he went, he was surrounded by crowds of people who listened to him and asked him to do something for them. It had been an incredibly full and active and demanding three years. And during that time, he was in control of everything he did and of everything that happened to him. He came and went and did more or less 
as he pleased. But when he was handed over to his enemies and handed over by one of his own in the Garden of Gethsemane, all that came to an end. It was a turning point in his life and in his ministry. From then on, he began to undergo suffering. That's when his passion began. From that moment on, when Judas betrayed him and he was arrested, he was no longer in control of what was happening in his life. Things were now being done to him rather than by him. He was arrested, put in prison, led before Caiaphas, the high priest, and then Pontius Pilate. He was interrogated, scourged, crowned with, uh, crowned with thorns, made to carry a cross, stripped of his clothes, nailed to the cross, mocked and made fun of. And finally, he died. Jesus fulfilled his mission, not only by what he did and said, but also, and more especially, by what was done to him, by his passion. Much of our lives are determined more by what is done to us than by what we do. And in a very real sense, that's our passion. But it's this passion of ours that leads to our salvation. It's important for us to realize how much we are actually acted upon, how little we really control in our lives. As we grow up and move through life, we have illness of one kind, accidents, loss of friendships, failures in relationships, disappointments with spouses and children, the death of loved ones, the drudgery of job and work, and on and on and on. Now, of course, there are times of much joy and happiness and peace and contentment. Life isn't always just gloom and doom. But the reality is that there are many, many things which are just simply outside of our control. They are all part of what it means to be human. And we have a choice in how we respond and react to what life throws at us. Our response, our attitude, is what makes all the difference. Jesus survived and persevered as himself, strong, good, loving. Who would we be if loss or crisis or illness or aging were to take away from us our dignity, our sense of self-worth, even all that we have and are. The passion shows us how Jesus responded to what was done to him. We see how, in the midst of his passion, Jesus cared about others, about the women of Jerusalem who sympathized with him, and the repentant thief hanging in crucifixion next to him, and, of course, his mother. He absorbed all the hatred and violence transformed it and returned it as love and forgiveness. He showed us the victory of love over all the powers of evil. There was nothing but love in him. Even when they nailed his hands and feet to that cross, he was loving. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, he said. We should remember that when someone says something to us that hurts us. When something does something, when someone does something to us, that hurts us. The passion of Jesus is about salvation and redemption and about love and forgiveness. We call ourselves Christians, disciples of Jesus Christ. Well, that means that we should act and behave like he did. That means that we should try to be like him, to do what he said and did. On this day, we are Jesus' companions, asked by him to accept and endure our passion and pick up our cross and follow him. And with the same attitude and response he had, Father, thy will, not my will, be done. And Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let us stand. <clears throat>
Let us pray, dear friends, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God the Almighty Father guide it and gather it together so that we may worship him in peace and tranquility. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty eternal God, you have shown your glory to our nations. In Christ your Son, guide the work of your church, help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring salvation to people everywhere. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God who chose him to be bishop may give him health and strength to guide and govern God's holy people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and eternal God, you guide all things by your word. You govern all Christian people. In your love, protect the Pope you have chosen for us. Under his leadership, deepen our faith and make us better Christians. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for Peter, our bishop, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for all who have a special ministry in the church, and for all God's people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Listen to our prayers and help each of us in his own vocation to do your work more faithfully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those among us preparing for baptism, that God in his mercy make them responsive to his love, forgive their sins through the waters of new birth, and give them life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and eternal God, you continually bless your church with new members. Increase the faith and understanding of those among us preparing for baptism. Give them a new birth in these living waters and make them members of your chosen family. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and keep together in one church all those who seek the truth with sincerity. Let us kneel. Let us stand. 
Almighty and eternal God, you keep together those you have united. Look kindly on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are all consecrated to you by our common baptism. Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God, that they may continue to grow in the love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and his posterity. Listen to your church as we pray that the people you first made your own may arrive at the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way to salvation. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and eternal God, enable those who do not acknowledge Christ to find the truth as they walk before you in sincerity of heart. Help us to grow in love for one another, to grasp more fully the mystery of, the, of your Godhead, and to become more perfect witnesses of your love in the sight of men. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God, that they may find him by sincerely following all that is right. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and eternal God, you created humankind so that all might long to find you and have peace when you have found. Grant that in spite of the hurtful things that stand in their way, they may recognize in the lives of Christians the tokens of your love and mercy, and gl gladly acknowledge you as the one true God and Father of us all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve us in public office, that God may guide their minds and hearts, so that all people may live in true peace and freedom. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and eternal God, you know the longings of people's hearts 
and you, pro and you protect their rights. In your goodness, watch over those in authority so that your people everywhere may enjoy religious freedom, security, and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dear friends, that God the Almighty Father may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, you give strength to the weary, and you courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us this is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Say 
Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. You're welcome to come up. We're going to make a cross. We'll do this when we do the communion. We have two lines in the center, two lines to each side. We suggest you just touch and do not kiss. We do have the sanitizers on both sides if you want to use them.
At the Savior's command, I'm formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Let us kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who sacrificed his life for us. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
preserving us in one of your mercy. By partaking of this mystery, we may have a life of season devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. <coughs> May pardon, come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep meditating on the sufferings and death. 